It's Persona time! Hello and welcome to another video review. Today we're gonna have a look at the Figma number 404. It's Persona 5. Fox. The next one in the Persona line. Very hyped, very excited for this one. I mean, I love Persona 5. That's still one of the finest games with some of the finest characters in existence. Has a great art style. So the, the Figma line is just mwah, perfect. Made for it. So I don't want to waste any more time. You've seen the box. Let's have a look at the figure. Say what you want about Figma, but they really have a talent in capturing anime style designs. So, first I'm going to have a look at the size, if I can figure out what side my ruler is on. He stands at about 15 centimeters. Yeah, he's a pretty tall guy um, in the world of Persona. And generally, like he will be like a little bit of a bigger Figma from what I can tell. He stands also at 5'8". Uh, five, five, inches tall now overall look and detail of the figure as i was saying animu eyes animu design figma does that quite nicely i love the eyes persona i like the persona line in general has its own distinctive style and they really captured that very nicely the hair is flowing has a little bit of detail in it not too much but it's just accurate it really fits everything we got the color with the zipper going all the way around which is soft plastic this entire upper piece is soft plastic actually as we move around just looking at the color it's good for the most part there are some spots here and there i don't really know what's going on over there and uh it works though it's nothing too bad like the small buttons over here and i feel like the zipper look very impressive that is very nicely done actually there's not an issue with that and the small kind of rings that are in his puffy shoulder parts then we go down to the little golden bolts kind of like more buttons that are in the in his forearm and the blue gloves also the belt nicely molded and very cleanly done there is not a line that has any any issues no spots on that one Got a little bit of gold on the tail, and the tail itself also has tiny bits of paint bleeding from the red going over to the white. But that's really the only thing. That's the only thing that's somewhat noticeable. Well, it is pretty noticeable, to be fair. And then we move down to his pants, which, once again, the white and the black, or like the dark blue that meet, have a little bit of paint bleeding but it's okay i feel like except for no this is really like the mold it's kind of going over it but it's still kind of like a weird kind of like a weird circle and then we go down to the boots which has like gold rings in it also very nice painted very nicely molded and yeah overall i mean it's good it works i'm happy that the paint came out okay with this guy now for your articulation gonna start off at the hat does go back does go forward very nicely and does go all the way around tilts side to side just a little bit it's kind of blocked but you have the ball hinge in there gotta play around with that i guess if you take off the face you get a little bit more out of it got the double ball combination in the shoulder this piece of the torso is soft plastic so it does not get in the way you can get it all the way up and it's kind of a little bit loose there then we have the simple also rotation all the way around. Simple hinge in the elbow does leave a little bit of a gap, but that's okay. You can't really do anything against, you know, he has these puffy arms, arm sleeves. Well, sleeves just really. Then the ball joint in the fist goes forward, has a hinge in it, so goes forward back. Rotates all the way around. Now the torso articulation is really something else. That's, okay, let me, I want to get this back into position. Well, I don't have the hinge, I think, in the right. There you go. Then we got the torso. Now, the entire torso piece is actually soft plastic. I sat up here at the shoulder, but it's the entire piece. Kind of forgot about that, but yeah. Forward motion, very good. He does take a bow to the back. Not so much, but still, this is really impressive. Does leave a little bit of a gap, obviously. Does rotate all the way around, very mobile. And does also tilt side to side way too much, actually. It does kind of break off the uh, the zipper, but what are you going to do about that? You can't really change that. Then we have another articulation point at the hips, which, once again, same thing. Does go all the way to the back. Like, you can play limbo with this guy. Forward. Like, just, if you combine these two, yeah. That's what you get. So, that's pretty impressive. 
obviously leaves a gap, but that's to be expected. The thing is you can pull it out just to really, well, it kind of naturally goes out as the leg. I'm trying to pull, pull a little bit too rough on the leg. So yeah, that gives you all the wiggle motion you need for the hips and then just pump it back in. But that, like I'm saying, it kind of naturally pulls out when you're moving forward to the side and also goes all the way around. For the belt, it's kind of sort of packed in here. I think kind of sort of, it's just held on. I think if you push it down, you could get it off, but why would you want to do that? So it kind of naturally moves around with it. Then we got the tail, also on a ball hinge, goes up and down, rotation, and uh, there's a swivel over here. Is there another swivel? No, just the one swivel in the middle of it. So it doesn't really get caught up too much. And then for the leg articulation, the crotch piece is also soft plastic, just like the upper piece. The middle piece is hard plastic, so still, you know, boom, goes up all the way, goes out to the side all the way, and goes to the back all the way, has rotation because just on ball joints. And then we got a simple hinge in the knee, and the foot is on another flat ball hinge, goes forward, goes to the back, does tilt side to side, and you have a toe hinge that goes all the way up and all the way down. Although mine only works on one side. I really tried around this one. This one's just completely stuck. Doesn't want to move, so... Yes! Quality control issues! Hooray! So, for the accessories, I'm gonna start off with the assault rifle because it looks really good. There's a lot of detail in it. It's one solid color, but that's how an assault rifle will look. It's a little bit metallic. But I really love the attention to it. The mold is actually great. But I guess they know what they're doing, like the, with the frame arms, uh, not the frame arms, they have like uh, Animu Waifus with, with guns. I don't, I forgot the name of it. I don't collect those yet. But anyway, stay, sticking with this review, we got a Japanese sword, nice red and gold. Looks really royal, like Persona 5 royal. <gasps> I'm, I'm excited for that. I'm, I'm playing that game again. But uh, this one. Just kind of in the holster, and then you got the sword itself, a very nice detail also. In the gray metallic part, the handle is obviously the same. And then you have another one, a longer one, which you can just put in here when he just kind of gets ready to pull it out. He's ready for battle. It's not completely out. Wow, that sounds dirty. Then we got the faces. You got very monotone looks, but that really fits the character. Often I said, oh, I could use the yelling face, but that doesn't fit Yusuke. He's really calm, he's like, you know, he's an artist, so I kind of kind of relate to that. But yeah, kind of like the smirk and the annoyed face. To the side, obviously you got a fox mask, which you just put on by putting, by taking the front hair off, and then you just put this one on. Has a little bit of hair on the side, and that is not cool. The paint bleeding on that side is not cool. It looks... Oh, well, there's also paint bleeding on that. Okay, let's not look at that. The red is nice, although it's not... Is it just me or is this not centered? Is this not in the middle? Looks like it's kind of shifting off to the side. But for the rest of it, the red looks good. Not really complaining, but the blue... Ah, uh, the hair. His hair bleeding over to the mask. And then we got the fan. Just the white fan. Nicely molded. Looks accurate. And we got the hands. We got two... Well, holding hands, really, this one with a trigger finger, and these ones are closed, open hands, and once again, just kind of more posing, and uh, I think like kind of to hold the gun in the front part or whatnot. Yeah, something like that. But he's also really pointing the finger out, so I guess it's more posing stuff for that. And uh, finally, as every Figma, you got the Figma back, which is still in the back, and you got the Figma base, which is still on the character. So if you've already seen it, so that's gonna do it, that's gonna bring me to the final thoughts of this Figma Persona 5 Fox. What do I think about this figure? Yeah, another stellar entrance in the Persona 5 Figma line. Um, the only really downside is that there is some nasty paint bleeding, especially on the mask and a little bit on the rat with the tail. It's forgivable stuff also around the boot, but yeah, it's forgivable stuff. Not perfect, but good in the paint department. The articulation though is amazing, it's out of this world. It seems like Figma really goes above and beyond whenever there's like tall, slim characters. They really do special stuff with that, and I appreciate it. 
And as far as the accessories go, you have everything you need. So nothing really to complain there. And there's nothing too fancy, but like I'm saying, you got everything you need with your Fox character. So yes, I do recommend this one if you're a fan of Persona or if you're just a fan of cool looking figures and very well articulated figures. This one is for you. So that's gonna do it guys. As usual, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, if you enjoyed this review, hit it up with a like and subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for more figure reviews, gameplay stuff, and whatever Fox wants.